Rusty, what happened to you? You don't look like yourself. Hey, who are you and what have you done to my dog? Oh, you multiplied? <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Rusty Beauty's Restorations in the Rusty Beauty's Garage. And today we are again on our 1970 Triumph TR6. And I'm hoping this is going to be a really interesting video because we are almost ready to start the car. So hopefully by the end of this video, we're going to start this baby. In the last episode, we took care of the linkage here of the carbs. We run fuel lines and all that, and what is left before we are able to attempt to start the engine is the distributor drive gear needs to be positioned properly, and the distributor needs to be cleaned up, painted, and whatever needs to be done in order to drop it on there. Then, like I said, multiple times already, I'd like to check the cam timing because i've done this timing but in my early mechanic days when this engine was rebuilt i was known to make the same mistake a few times <laughs> which was to degree the camshaft with the degree wheel upside down so <laughs> i'm hoping that i haven't done that mistake on this engine but we're gonna check it quickly and then i hope that we're gonna start the engine so i'm sure it's gonna be an interesting video so let's get crack a lock So we have the distributor sitting over there. So let's take it to the bench and take care of it. So like I said, this distributor, so like I said, this distributor, I was planning to use it as it is because I know that the car started a long time ago. It started with it, but now I'm looking at it and um, this wire probably I made, it's possible. But this little wire here too, it is stripped and about to snap and all that. We don't want to have any issues on the first startup of this engine. We want to have it perfectly fine. So we have an electronic ignition and we're going to install it. Oh, this soaring is also... Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need to replace the o-ring as well. Yeah, and we're going to need to clean it. Let's see if the vacuum advance works. Is that an advance? Yeah, that's an advance. Good. I like vacuum advance. I don't like vacuum retard. Yeah, it moves. <laughs> but it doesn't hold. <laughs> yeah, it moves, but it requires constant vacuum to stay on, which is kind of okay. Actually, there's few other distributors in John's parts. Let me go around and see what else we have. That's the other one that was in the parts. This one has retard and advance. It's been gutted anyways, but let's see if the advance is going to work. No. This one doesn't move at all. Well, this is what it is. If John wants, we can buy a new vacuum unit yeah, they are expensive we'll see let me put it in my list so i can talk to john okay let's gut it and let's make sure that everything inside works and then we're gonna clean it up and we'll see if we're gonna have to paint it or what we're gonna do I just want to see the weights underneath, if they are in a good shape. Well, this wire is still going to be questionable here. Well, it's not that bad. I mean, the cloth around the wire is ripped, but the actual wire is not that bad. Okay. So this we need to make sure that spins. So we're going to take it apart and we're going to put lubrication underneath. 
Let's see without the load if this is gonna hold. No, you see the spring goes in and comes back. And it's not my pump, I'm sure it's not my pump. You see my pump holds really well. But it doesn't hold here. Hmm. That's better actually, okay. Okay, so it's my connection here. There you go. Okay, sorry. This means that we are lucky. We have a good unit here. I'm gonna take it out anyways to clean it up and paint it. But we have a good vacuum unit. Good. To take it out, we need to take this little... It looks like a piece of wire, but it's not. It's a circlip. How do you take it out and put it back on? I have no idea without losing it. But I've done it multiple times and knock on wood, I haven't lost one. There you go. It came out. And no, it's not just a simple piece of wire. It's actually a thing. Anyway, now we can loosen this screw. Uh, now it's becoming tight here. I should have wired wheeled it a little bit. Okay, we need to clean these threads. We need to make this easy. There's a spring here that makes this ratcheting sound. So now we have to be careful not to lose it. On many distributors it's missing. Not this one, this one here, you see, yeah, inside everything looks okay, can you see there, springs are there, hmm, these little weights on the side, I don't see them moving though, wow, these are not moving at all, they should be moving, wow, are they seized? That's interesting. Okay, let's take everything apart. I don't understand what's going on there. So we're gonna take the springs out and the springs are different. So we're gonna memorize the configuration. They sell four different types of springs, I believe for here. And depending on the tension of the spring, you have different rates for the mechanical advance. So here we're gonna put it the same way as it is. Also, when we take out this uh, little camshaft with, uh, with the six cams, it has a position that it needs to go back into. You can put it reverse and then your distributor is gonna be reversed. Your first cylinder is gonna be on the opposite side of wherever it normally is because we're gonna deal with that later, but, but here you see this key is a little bit offset to the right it doesn't go through the center. So that also matches the slot on the drive gear. So if your drive gear is positioned properly and you engage your distributor properly with the drive gear, your first cylinder, hold on, that's how it is normally. So if you imagine that this is the engine here and this is your first, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth cylinder like this, your first cylinder is normally here pointing to the front left or somewhere. But if you reverse this uh, camshaft 180 degrees, then when you engage this the proper way with your drive gear, then your first cylinder ends up being on this side. So how it normally is, when you look at this key underneath, when you have it to the right of the center, right now that's how it is, and here you have the slot for the key for the rotor pointing to you. So the key needs to be to the right and the slot needs to be pointing to you. And right now the way the springs are, the heavy spring is on that side, the key is pointing towards me, but the key, the heavy spring is on that side and the 
sl smaller spring is on my side. I'm not sure if that really matters the position of the spring as long as the added strength of the two springs is certain amount. I'm not really sure, but we're gonna just put it the same way. There's something inside there. <laughs> it's a bullet connector. <laughs> it's been a little bit worn. Wow. Maybe that's what was blocking my stuff. Now let's remove this screw. I'm using soft jaws here, so I don't damage my anything. And here we have a little bit of play to go up and down. That's normal. Like we can't have too much play though, but a little bit is normal because this screw here has a shoulder that limits how much it tightens. So the shaft can still spin, right? Okay, everything here seems to be good. No play. Not a lot of play anyway. So I'm gonna put it back. Okay, these are moving properly, no problem. So we're just gonna lubricate it and put it back together. Where is my white lithium grease? I miss it so much. Okay, I installed the springs as well and now you can see how when you pull the weights up, out, like it's hard to do it, but when you pull the weights out, uh, I don't know how to do it, so you can see, there you go, you pull this, the weights out and that moves this dog or whatever you want to pull it this way so this this means that it advances the timing a little bit because now the rotor is a little bit ahead of the camshaft let's say because the main shaft of the distributor is meshed with the camshaft right but here we can advance the rotor in relation to the main shaft of the distributor and essentially with the camshaft here we have a stamp 17 degrees, so if we go to the charts, we can find out what this means, that probably it advances 17 degrees at certain RPM. Anyways, so that's how this works. Now, let's uh, take care of this baby. Let's take it apart and clean it, and we're gonna assemble it again. So to take it apart, we just turn it like this until this pin comes out. And, oops and this spring needed to be pushed up. So let's clean it up, assemble it again, and install it. Okay. Not perfect, but I didn't wanna wash it, wash it, and just clean it up a little bit with a wire wheel, gently, so we don't remove the cadmium or whatever this coating is. We're gonna lubricate a little bit here because this is the actual bearing actually these here are just uh, like trust washers i guess so very little so now to assemble it we have to put this under the spring first and then click it here and there you go that's it in this the excess here now that's how it goes with this pin towards the vacuum advance unit I cleaned these screws a little bit as well under this screw we also have this ground cable that ensures that we have ground on this top plate because this is the plate that spins and 
even though it touches metal to metal here we have lubrication so it's possible that it doesn't make a good ground and a good ground to this plate is important make sure that it still spins freely and the wire here you see why this wire is chewed like that it is what it is okay now let's install the vacuum unit nicely painted I put very little grease on these threads as well now I can shave it shove it in make sure to hook it up here to the pin like that now here don't forget the string if you still have it okay. and then the nut Now here we have a scale, and I believe each increment here is uh, four degrees. I might be wrong, like I'm, I'm not really sure. You have A and R here. A is for advanced, R is for retard, because you see as we're turning this nut here, the plate turns as well, right? So we're gonna leave it here somewhere in the middle because if we can go all the way, so that's how far we can go, and the other end is here let's put also this little thing here I don't know how we're gonna put it okay it always seems as a miracle to me when I take it off and put it back on without losing it so our other end is when the nut hits this circlet so we're gonna keep this somewhere in the middle now so we can have adjustment in both directions I would say this is somewhere in the middle. Actually, this matches this mark as well. You see, we have a thicker mark here, and this thicker mark is pretty much in the middle. Okay, so that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forgot to put this spring. You're right. You were not screaming loud enough. Okay, we have to take it apart again. And then I did it again. <laughs> okay, nobody saw that. So if you don't tell anyone, I won't. And if we were doing points, we were gonna install the points and the condenser now. But for us, it's different strategy. Now we're gonna install the electronic ignition. Okay, so this is what we're going to use for electronic ignition. They call it Pertronics 1 now, because there's apparently a Pertronics 2, which has a red igniter that apparently you can leave on with the ignition on, and it's not going to burn. Because these, if you leave the ignition on without the car running, I don't know what happens, but they burn out. For us, it's important to know that we can't leave the ignition on for too long. Okay, so this is what comes with the kit the igniter i believe this is called igniter we're gonna install the plate first it comes with the screws so let's test it first but then i'm gonna take it out and i'm gonna put a drop of uh, thread lock well actually i don't need to you're right because the igniter is on top and now the igniter the igniter has a little of a, a little bit of adjustment here they made one oval so you can adjust the distance between the actual igniter and the little magnets here that already picked up stuff so we're gonna have to clean them before we put them in then we're gonna take these nuts we're gonna put them here okay we're gonna leave them loose so we can ugh, can't really adjust anything right <laughs> It doesn't move very well, so I'm gonna have to get rid of this little nib here so it can travel be better so for the adjustment. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. 
Now we can put the nuts, leave them loose, and I'm gonna go blow this magnet ring, I think it's called, because you see it has six magnets, and each of them gives signal to the pickup. So let me go blow it with compressed air to get rid of all these shavings, like this. You can't even tell there are magnets there, right? And inside it has the shape of the cams here, so they have to match. Have to find the location, you know, and then push it down. And I can't seem to find it. Why? I have another cam from another distributor. I want to see. No, I can't see much. Huh. Just doesn't want to go. You see these marks in the middle i believe they are for rigidity they were added so i don't want to file them away okay so this mark here matches one of our lobes so i'm gonna put it in this orientation where i know or actually i'm gonna put it in this orientation where i know that one of the lobes is square to the pickup and i'm gonna put it with the mark down like this I'm going to push it harder. I don't want to tap it. Mm. Okay, it went down. So we have to make sure that it is all the way down, right? That's it. And now, in the instructions, I haven't read them, but I know from previous installations that they ask you to set a gap here of between 15 and 30 tau. So it's pretty big tolerance. That's interesting. I don't see anywhere in these instructions the recommended gap. Yeah, They don't tell you anything about the gap. But I know from other igniters they give you a pretty wide range. Also here in the baggie. Well, I don't know what this screw is for. I forgot this one. Okay. Don't tell anyone, I won't tell either. And here in the baggie they give you a filler gauge, which is basically a piece of plastic. 29 tau. So 30 tau. I know that they ask you to set it between 15 and 30, so they give you a pretty big tolerance. Okay, we press it firmly against the magnets. Good. And then we're gonna bring the wires in here. Now here we have to be really careful with this. Don't ask why. <laughs> so they send you even a zip tie already pre-started. So where am I supposed to put this? Cut it. Because <laughs> I don't have another one this small so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a shape and I don't know if you see that well from there but we're gonna do this and we're gonna zip tie it down here like that not too hard just enough to keep the wires down so they don't get caught on the rotor because that's what happened with Chef Tash <laughs> But I didn't tell you that. <laughs> okay. And now we just need to make sure that the vacuum still moves the plate and it can move no problem. No. We have a pretty good vacuum. But it doesn't move. Why? What's blocking it? Okay, now I understand what happened here. I got tricked by this fitting that everything worked. When I'm not pressing too hard on the fitting, that's when I'm actually getting the real situation here. You see, I'm building up vacuum. 
it moves a little bit, but then it loses the vacuum. What I did before was I pressed hard on this fitting and that's when it started holding vacuum. But the problem is that now I'm actually forcing the end of this little tube here into the bottom of this fitting. I'm basically blocking my uh, vacuum pump like this. That's all I'm doing. But if I have it pressed not all the way in, just like that, that's when I'm allowing the vacuum actually to suck from the vacuum unit and that's when this moves but it comes back right away because it's leaking somewhere inside so unfortunately we do need a vacuum unit another one so for now for the first start we don't need it but we're gonna have to order another one for John so anyways this is assembled now all we need is the rotor for here and a cup Let's check this cup. Oh, the cup is not great. No, these contacts are not great. So we're gonna find a new cup, which I have somewhere, and a new rotor. We're gonna install them. We're gonna have to shorten these wires. They come pre-wired with everything, but that's way too long. We're gonna shorten them. And these go to the ignition coil, so the red one goes to the positive because that terminal is always live with the ignition on. And the black one goes to the negative of the coil because that provides ground when the artificial points here are closed and disconnects the ground when the artificial points are open. <laughs> Interesting definition I came up with, didn't I? This is a new rotor, but we used it in that distributor, remember? the mysterious distributor that we couldn't figure out what was wrong with it so i kept swapping parts in it just temporarily to see if the rotor was a problem with that distributor so here this tooth inside is on the opposite direction of the contact so just so you know we have to make sure that it is all the way in like that okay and we have a brand new cup I believe it is the same situation. <laughs> I think it was used just to test that distributor, but brand new contacts and everything. So that's how it goes. Make sure again that the wires are not touching anything away from the rotor. And we're good. Perfect. And one last thing we need to do with this distributor we need to replace that o-ring down there like that I have a new o-ring here and we're just gonna make sure that it fits because it comes from my set so i don't know exactly if this is the correct size so i'm gonna make sure that it goes in but it doesn't go in without any friction so you see it hits there the shoulder but if i if i push harder goes in there are standards here how much the o-ring needs to protrude from the surface but how do you measure that with calipers well, so that's how i do it in real life i make sure that it it hits the shoulder but also when you push harder it goes in so now we can install it in the car but before that we need to position the distributor drive gear in correct orientation so i know that many of you have seen this on my channel multiple times but i know that there are many of you who are new to the channel so that's for the new people so this distributor drive gear has a slot on top which engages with the tail of the distributor and remember how we said that this key here it's not directly through the center it's a little bit offset to one side the same of course is valid for this gear you see the slot where this key goes is offset to one side also this gear at the bottom has this slot which engages with the oil pump so for the oil pump it doesn't really matter in what orientation we engage this this way or this way but here it's important that this slot engages with the distributor in certain way so you always know that your first cylinder on top of the distributor is here towards the front left tire if you mess it up if you don't position it correctly it's not the end of the world. You just need to experiment after and find which hole on the distributor cap is your first cylinder and go from there. I've seen cars with first cylinder here, 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 everywhere. That's what I do when I'm working on unknown car. Before I take it apart, I make sure that 
I know to where first cylinder is on the distributor because they are all over the place. So it's not the end of the world if you don't position it correctly. However, this is how they came out of the factory and that's how I assembled them so it is easy to find first cylinder. So we are aiming at this position of the distributor driving gear when the engine is at top dead center at the firing stroke of the first cylinder. What we're gonna do now is turn the engine until we know that it is at the top dead center of the firing stroke of first cylinder and then we're gonna position this gear this way. So the slot is off center towards the engine and the slot points at two and eight o'clock. That's more or less where it needs to go. However, you see the teeth on the gear are not vertical. This means that as the gear goes down, it's gonna turn. We have to put it something like that. And as it goes down, it's gonna turn on its own until it goes to its position. And that's where it's gonna be at two at eight. So we wanna put it something like that initially. And as it goes down, it's gonna go where we want it. The thing is though, if this slot doesn't match, it's not gonna allow us to push it down all the way. So what we're gonna do is when we put it down and it starts engaging with this teeth here, we're gonna start turning also the engine which is going to turn the camshaft and which is going to turn this gear. The pump is going to stay stationary because there's nothing rotating it. And as the gear rotates, eventually it's going to find its way here and it's going to engage with the fuel pump as well. And then the gear is going to drop a little bit more and it's going to turn a little bit more. So then we're going to have to turn the engine back because now we rotated it. It's not a top dead center. So we're going to turn it back to top dead center and we're gonna make sure that the slot is at two and eight o'clock. That's the whole procedure. So I wanted to explain it before we do it. So now let's see where the engine is. Oh, it's right here, I didn't see it. <laughs> Actually, the pulley shows me top dead center right now. So let's see if that's top dead center of the first cylinder firing stroke or the six, because we have two top dead centers per cycle, right? One is on the firing stroke, one is between the intake and exhaust. So here, these two don't move at all. This means that probably they're between the intake and the exhaust strokes. These two, that's where they, ha they have a little gap. So now we are at the firing stroke of the sixth cylinder. So. We can do the exact same procedure with the gear reversed here. We can put the gear with the slot on this side instead of that side, but I'm not gonna make it too confusing. I'm just gonna turn the engine to the other top dead center. So I removed this hose from here. I don't know if you see, but I removed this hose to help me turn the alternator because just with one hand, I can't turn the engine easily. So, Turning it, turning it, turning it, turning it. Uh, come on. Okay. Top dead center again. Well, we need to adjust these valves because I have a gap here, but it is very small. It's literally very small. And this one seems to be too big. And these ones now are tight. So that's the firing stroke of the first cylinder top dead center. Let's take our gear. The slot is on that side of the center. We're going to put it somewhere a little bit past 12 o'clock like this. And you see as it goes down, it turns on its own. And now we're going to start spinning the engine again. Let's see if I can turn it with one hand. And with the other hand, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on the gear. So as it engages with the uh, oil pump, it's gonna drop down. Yeah, but I can't spin the engine like that. Oh my God. I need a third hand. <laughs> oh, uh, there you go, it went down. Perfect, so now I'm gonna return the engine to top dead center. Push on the gear down to make sure that it's engaged and it is exactly where I wanted it to be perfect we hit it the first time that's the orientation that we want two and eight o'clock compared to the engine 
Okay, so now I'm gonna clean up here the old gasket and the old gasket maker. And there's a procedure here also to find here the correct amount of gaskets for the correct gear and play. But we've done it on this engine before, so there's only one gasket here and we're gonna use only one gasket again. Well, I was able to remove it in one piece. Perfect, so I don't need to scrape it. Good. And then we're gonna install the pedestal, which is right here. And then we're gonna install the distributor. And this is gonna be in the way for the tachometer cable here, isn't it? Hmm, okay, we're gonna deal with that separately, we'll see. Anyway, the, bro the bracket is installed. So we need to put it this way, and of course there's only one way for this key to engage with the drive gear, and that should be pretty much with the rotor pointing towards me. But I'm gonna turn it somewhere off so I can feel when it goes down. I don't want it to engage immediately, I want to push down on it and feel as it goes down. So, there you go. That was engaged. Perfect. So now we're gonna put this screw in the back. Okay. And now we're gonna snug this one, but not too tight because we still want to adjust the distributor for the ignition timing, right? Okay. Put the cap on so we don't disturb anything inside. All right, and now the last thing is we're gonna shorten these. I don't wanna coil them and blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna shorten them, I'm gonna put connectors, I'm gonna leave some tolerance here, but something like that. Positive goes here. And the negative goes here. Nice. And now when we connect the ignition wire to the coil, the coil is gonna be live and also the electronic ignition module inside. So that's done. Later we're gonna adjust the timing. Now let's turn our attention to the cam timing. I'm really interested to find out if I made a mistake there or not. Okay, so to check the cam timing, I made this setup here on my lathe <laughs> with a degree wheel that is garbage because uh, it has zero for bottom dead center and zero for top dead center. That's how it should be, but that confuses me a lot. So I make all my new degree wheels to have zero at top dead center and then they have 90 and then it continues to 180 at bottom dead center. That doesn't really matter now, so this degree wheel is garbage, so we're gonna draw on it. We're gonna use the method of valve overlapping, and what I mean by that is, if you look at the spec of the Triumph TR6, the standard spec, as it came out of the factory for the later cars, it is 18, 58, 58, 18. That, what does this mean? This means that the intake valve starts to open at 18 degrees before top dead center on the crankshaft. So our crankshaft rotates this way if we look from uh, the front of the engine. So this is top dead center right here. And this means that our intake starts to open 18 degrees before that. It starts to open somewhere here and closes 58 after bottom dead center, so somewhere here, 58, right? So when it starts here, if we just scribe a line, it continues bef after bottom dead center and it closes right here. And it goes in this direction, right? Okay, so that's our intake valve. 
our exhaust valve though is exactly the opposite. It starts to open 58 degrees before bottom dead center, which means right here. This is bottom dead center right here, 58, and it closes at 18 after top dead center. If it starts here, it goes like this, it reaches bot uh, top dead center, and 18 degrees after top dead center, it closes. But you see what happens here now. At top dead center, we have the two valves equally open. The exhaust, which is again this way, it is closing, and right here, at top dead center, is almost closed, but it's still not completely closed. It has another 18 degrees to travel, right? And the intake, in the meantime, it starts to open here, so at top dead center is a little bit open, and since the cams on the camshaft, on the stock camshaft for the intake and the and exhaust are the exact same profile, this means that for these 18 degrees here and these 18 degrees here, we need to have equal amount of opening of the, on the valves. That's on theory. In, in fact, they are not open at top dead center. The valve lash is uh, compensating for that, so they are not open, but the push rods are pushed up a little bit. So because of this fact, we know that the two valves should be equally open at top dead center between the intake and the exhaust stroke, because in the firing stroke, they're both closed and we have even a valve lash there. So we can go now at the engine and measure at top dead center how much the push rod for the intake is lifted and how much the push rod for the exhaust is lifted. And that is gonna tell us whether our timing is correct or not. They have to be pretty close. Okay, to do that though, we need to have a good reference for top dead center. We have a mark on the front pulley, but I wanna make sure that this mark is correct because sometimes what happens is from the dampfer, the rubber slips, and your mark is not perfectly correct. So it's good to know for your car whether that mark is correct or not. So we're gonna check that with this piston stop, which was donated to me. And what it does is you thread it into the spark plug hole. Let me see. And then we can thread this inside. And now we are at top dead center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this until I hit the piston with it. I'm not gonna force it, of course, just until I feel that I'm hitting the piston. Okay, now I'm hitting the piston here. And because I'm at top dead center, I'm gonna turn it a little bit more. So now the piston goes a little bit lower. Okay. And I'm gonna turn it more now. Maybe all the way. Yeah, all the way. And now, again, I'm gonna turn the engine backwards until the piston hits the piston stop. <coughs> I think it is there, actually. Let me try. I turn this way. There you go. Oh, I cut myself. Okay, so now we are at the piston. And now we're gonna see the distance on the pulley from the mark to the pointer. Oh my god. Okay, I can't find my regular caliper. I'm gonna have to use my machinist caliper which I didn't want to use here. All right, so we don't even care what the number is because it's important now to turn the crankshaft clockwise. So this mark is gonna go underneath and it's gonna come on this side. And again, it's gonna stop when the piston hits the piston stop. But if this distance is different, then that's gonna mean that this mark is not correct, Let's right? See. Do you see? I don't. Okay, I'm gonna line it up here. Okay, that's pretty darn close. So this tells me that the mark on the pulley is still correct. And now before we remove the piston stop, 
we should turn the engine back a little bit so we don't turn the screw on top of the piston, right? We don't want to leave a mark. Now we can proceed to measuring the height of the push rod. Okay, so I set up my dial gauge here on the intake and this is where the intake is fully closed because here you see I have this lash. So now we want to go to the beginning of the duration of the intake where it starts to open and we know that this happens 18 degrees before top dead center and at top dead center we want to see how much it is open. So this is where I zeroed it at this position. That's what we care about. We push the rocker down and now we're going to turn it until the push rod starts going up, right? So let's see. Oh. There you go, it started going up. So now I'm gonna watch for top dead center here and I'm gonna see when it is exactly at top dead center, which is right here. And that is 40 tau. So the push rod got lifted 40 tau at top dead center. Good, now let's do the same with the exhaust, except we're not gonna go to the beginning of the duration we have to go to the end of the duration of the exhaust so i'm gonna remove this from here and let's turn the engine until the exhaust is fully closed well it just happened yeah which is normal because we were just at that point where the exhaust was almost closed but not fully closed so i'm gonna go a little bit more because now it is fully closed there you go but i'm gonna turn a little bit more just to make sure and we're going to zero the gauge here. Again, we have a little bit of lash. So we're going to push the rocker down here on this side and we're going to zero the gauge. Give it a few magic taps. Yes, that's our zero. So now we're going to turn the engine backwards to go to the end of the duration of the exhaust valve until it starts to open and we're gonna go past top dead center so we can approach it in the natural direction of rotation of the engine and now i'm gonna start coming in the correct direction and right here is our top dead center 36 yeah zero is here so 10 20 30 36 so if we continue turning it should go to zero there you go well a little bit more there you go so we are perfectly fine. We had 36 tau here, 40 tau here. So we are really, really close. Okay, now I'm relaxed. I know that I didn't make that mistake. So, good. Now I'm gonna go and adjust the valves. I'm not gonna show you that because that's pretty simple process. I'm gonna do it on my own. And then we're gonna really get ready for starting the engine. Yay! All right, so I adjusted the valves put the cover on this is a temporary cover that uh, like I said we're gonna take off and we're gonna readjust the valves after we run the engine and we're gonna put an alloy cover meanwhile look who showed up I'm, I'm on fire extinguisher duty <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I have a set of uh, spark plugs here that we're gonna use new ones but before we do that let's adjust the timing on the distributor the ignition timing so we're gonna put just the wire from the coil to the distributor and a wire on the first cylinder and we're gonna put a spark plug one of the old ones and we're gonna try to electrocute somebody <laughs> <laughs> all right so huh, i don't remember where i left it well i left it on number four because i adjusted the valves at one five three six two four so now we are at top dead center of the firing stroke on number four so if I turn the engine a little bit more now, 
until I hit the top dead center again, that's gonna be my number one firing stroke. So, I'm gonna leave it at eight degrees before top dead center. We confirm that this mark is correct. So eight, yeah, about eight degrees. We're gonna set it up initially, static timing, and we're good. All right, then we're gonna put for now just number one which should be here and we can actually make sure yeah because we are top dead center of first cylinder so we've done everything correctly supposedly and our distributor still moves back and forth and now i'm gonna use one of the old ones we just need to plug in a battery so the ignition is on but this the ignition wire is not plugged into the coil yet because I want to explain what we're doing. So the rotor inside spins counterclockwise, right? So to simulate that rotation, we're going to spin the distributor clockwise like this. And because the rotor is stationary, as soon as we come to the point where the first cylinder spark plug fires, that's where we're going to stop because we are at six degrees before top dead center for the first cylinder so that's where we're gonna stop and we're gonna tighten the bolt that's it so I'm gonna push it way past there I'm gonna plug the ignition oh it's parked <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm gonna do that again I don't know why it's parked there so now there you go unplug and we are set. So now very carefully, yeah. he's laughing at me. Well, now we're... Usually I'm the one that jumps. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now carefully without moving the distributor anymore, we're gonna tighten it and we're good to go. Okay, perfect. Turn the ignition off. We're gonna install the spark plugs, and, uh, keep an eye on the firing order. So the firing order is from here, number one, and then one, five, three, six, two, four. And we just need to install the hose here, tighten that clamp underneath, which I know it's still loose. We're gonna fill up the system with coolant. We're gonna connect my electric fuel pump here and we're gonna prime the, fu the fuel system. We need to cap here and there the vacuum hoses. And I think that's it. Let's get that and probably the next time we see you, we're gonna be ready for firing all right so i believe we are ready to start final checks we have the fuel lines hooked up we have the filter here hooked up to my electric pump we are full of coolant we left the cup off we're gonna uh, now i can add a little bit more yeah. i guess the vacuum ports we only plug this one and David believes that these are just vents for the float bowls. I don't think these are vacuum ports here. So we're also going to hook up uh, the timing light because David wants to observe the RPM because we don't have a cable for the regular tachometer. I just need to prime the fuel system and we're ready to go. Well pressure okay, looks like it primed itself. I mean, it filled up here. We checked the accelerator pump inside the curbs and it sprays. There you go. I don't see it very well here, no. but I think we should give it a crank and see what we, what's gonna happen. Yep. All right. That door is still closed. This gate is still closed. So I believe it's gonna start, but we're gonna open the gate and the door once it starts. So. Ready? The ignition is plugged in. Let's give it a try.
Well, she started. <laughs> That's good. You know what? I'm gonna switch to this fuel pump. I just don't trust that the electric one. It took forever to pump. Even though I started an engine with it before and it ran for half an hour. But somehow... Okay. We'll make some changes and we'll bring you back. Yeah. We switched to the mechanical pump now. And we still run through the filter. We primed the system again. That pump looks like from sitting it went bad. I don't know. Anyway, put you on the stand again, on the tripod again, and let's try again. Now it started dripping yeah. all of the sudden. Yeah. Well, good thing it didn't start in the beginning. <laughs> anyway, so it's been uh, 25 minutes. Now it started coming out from there as well. Yeah, well, there. And eh, it's not great. So we figured that the rear carburetor doesn't do much. Looks like we run only on one carburetor all this time. There are different noises here and we can hear i think the the water pump needs to be changed looks like it's rattling but she ran <laughs> i think uh when i push the gas when i hit the accelerator i can see the gas 
pumping out of this jet back here. I don't see anything really spraying out of here, nor do I see anything spraying out of these two in particular. Okay, but this one so is, this, this one should work only after this one is yeah. three quarters yeah, so turned. I, I don't see it though, when I give it a, a shot, I don't see anything spraying out of the rear either. Yeah, so maybe this one has a float bow issue. Mm. Maybe the uh, float is not adjusted properly and it doesn't have enough fuel in it, or I don't know. We're gonna have to take a look at the carbs in a separate occasion. But it's important that she run. So now we can tell that the camshaft has been broken in. It's leaking from everywhere now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's from, from the there. Yeah. yeah, from the overflow, it goes through the rod and comes here. Yeah. Anyway, but oil leaks, I didn't notice any. That's the coolant that's dripping here. This is from the bottom of my oil pan there when I was changing the filter. So no oil leaks for now <laughs> it's good oh my god it's cold yeah, couldn't you pick the warmer day yeah <laughs> another interesting thing that we saw was the this part of the radiator was cooler than the rest with my uh, thermal camera so that's a really good thing because you can see whether all the cylinders are firing and all that so we we saw that the exhaust manifold was equally hot everywhere that means that all they're all firing but yeah the radiator was not hot here as you saw the term the temperature sender needs to be replaced because when i connected it to the ground here it went all the way up but when i connected to the sender nothing so we need a new temperature sender what else the oil pressure went down to below 50 when it warmed up so i have to watch my videos and see if i change the oil pump i don't think i changed the oil pump on this car it's not bad i mean you see now i have a windshield frame so i can do this <laughs> no. yeah so she runs and that's the important part of course <laughs> she's gonna need a lot of work now tune up maybe this carb is gonna have to come out and uh, be taken care of we will see what we're gonna do um, I don't know much about these neither does David so <laughs> maybe the best option is to swap them with some Strombergs but we will see uh, anyway so that's everything for today I hope you enjoyed this video I def I'm definitely happy that she's running and we reached this milestone as well so that's gonna be everything for today thanks for watching thanks for commenting subscribing and sharing Thanks to David for helping me, giving me a hand with the first startup. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Yeah, I can't talk when there's too many people around. <laughs>